So uh, many, of, many of you will know uh, Halil and uh, Cortec, but some of you may not. Uh, so this is a quick introduction uh, to Cortec and to InVenture Technologies. So over to you, Halil. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Cortec Middle East is the regional office of Cortec Corporation, which is a global leader in vapor-based corrosion inhibitor technology for industrial sector and migratory corrosion inhibitor technology for reinforced concrete structures in the construction sector. Cortec has as a certified manufacturing facility. Can everyone just mute their mics? There's a lot of noise in the background. Uh, Cortec has eight ISO certified manufacturing facilities and R&D lab in North America and Europe. And since the establishment of Cortec Middle East Regional Office, we had an unwavering mission to pioneer and lead preservation solutions, protecting life, assets, and the environment. In Cortec Middle East, we engineer and optimize solutions using VPCI and MCI technology to solve, to solve chronic industrial <laughs> such as enhancing durability. I think someone has. Can you see both of them? So we engineer and optimize. Can you go? Okay, I think we. Can. Okay, I, I just muted, uh, I think, Antonio's uh, site. Anyway, so um, Cortec Middle East, we engineer and optimize solutions using VPCI and MCI technologies for chronic industrial challenges, such as enhancing durability of concrete reinforced structures, uh, providing preservation and mothballing services, and one, one main uh, application is protection of storage tank uh, above ground storage tank bottoms and road pipeline road crossings. Uh, back to you, Chris. Um, and uh, uh, mitigation of soil site corrosion on storage tank bottoms using VPCI technology is a focus application for Cortec. We uh, have been providing tank owners with this technology since 2000 globally and since 2011 in the MENA region. And so far we have protected more than 550 tanks globally, 350 out of them in, in, in the US and more than uh, 190 tanks in our region. The total surface area of tanks we have protected so far in this region is 3 million square feet, which is equivalent to 40 football stadiums, just to help you visualize the, the, the area that of tank bottom plates that we have protected so far. And uh, from the 190 tanks, we protected 120 tanks in service while they are in service, 45 tanks out of service uh, during testing and inspection, and 25 new tanks during the construction phase. Uh, this is a sample list, Chris and the rest of the audience of global and regional clients that have implemented Corologic AST solution uh, from different industries. We see uh, upstream, downstream, and midstream, oil and gas, petrochemicals, terminal operators, power and water. Okay, very good. So Rindet, tell us about um, InVenture Technologies. I will. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Rinde de Algra. I work for uh, Inventure Technologies, and we founded the company in 2008. Uh, we are originally a Dutch company. Our main office is in Delft, in the Netherlands. You can see a small picture of the of the main office uh, on the sheet. And um, we also have offices in Dubai. I operate from the office in Dubai, and we have an office in Singapore. 
and we focus mainly on asset reliability and integrity management for tank farms. So tank farms are uh, our biggest client base. Uh, we also um, uh, are involved in doing risk-based inspection for refineries and the chemical industry, but most of our clients are tank farms. And because of that, uh, we also have an in-house software development team and we develop uh, in-house software compliant with API 581 and API 653 for doing tank assessments. Uh, our main objective is to support our clients in uh, creating profit and at the same time um, ensuring an auditable and responsible tank farm operation. Back to you, Chris. Okay, let's... Um... This is a little selection of your client base as well, I believe. Correct. Yeah, this is yeah. a small selection of uh, our client base and uh, our client base is uh, situated in Europe. Uh, we also have some clients in America and of course, uh, clients in the Middle East. All right, Halil, can we move forward? Uh, let's get started now with the meat of the webinar. Um, let me just briefly introduce Dr. Antonio Martinez. Uh, I've known Antonio for the past 15 years. Uh, like me, he has a 40 year career in corrosion engineering and is a NACE certified CP specialist. Spent the last 17 years uh, working in the GCC region with Corpro, ADMA, now ADNOC Offshore, Saudi Aramco and BP. And Antonio is going to set the scene for us, uh, telling us about the problem that we are facing with soil side corrosion. So over to you, Antonio. I think he, need, he needs to unmute himself. Antonio? Can uh, you hear me? Yeah, now yes. we hear you. Yep. Yeah? Yep. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, my friend. Shukran. I would like to thank uh, uh, Halil Abed from Fortec Media East for this opportunity to share with uh, all the attendees uh, 40 years experience in corrosion control, mitigation, corrosion management, including corrosion of uh, above ground storage tank. It is uh, also a pleasure for me to be part of this virtual team in these difficult times with Chris Houghton and uh, Rinder Alira. Um, to start uh, the problem, I want to um, pose some uh, one example here in the Middle East that appear in one article in Materi Material Performance Magazine and also in the NACE Conference 2017. So the authors reported severe on the side corrosion of uh, bottom tanks with corrosion rate up to one to two millimeters per year in seven years after uh, commissioning. A failure of uh, four tons, it was uh, during uh, the first two years, and they detected severe corrosion associated with water ingress from leaking five water sprinkles through the gap between the annual place and tack foundation. Next slide, please. Yeah. Halil, Halil, you've got slide control. You have it, Chris. Yes, thank you. Uh, no, previous one, previous one. The previous one is possible. They so, yeah. They, sorry. Is possible the previous one? Yes. Uh, the investigation concluded lag, that the... Antonio, I'm sorry, there is a lag between your sorry. voice and the slide transition. Ah, okay. Now it's okay? Yeah, is this the slide that you want to talk to? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, this uh, investigation concluded that the impressed current cathode protection system uh, was uh, poorly designed and not achieving adequate protection uh, potentials. Uh, in the absence of other means of corrosion control, the tank floor was exposed to a severe form of 
bacterial and under deposited corrosion. That led to the perforation and loss of inventory. Yeah, next one. Yeah. Um, the tank floor corrosion can be a very complex uh, phenomenon, as shown in this cause effect diagram, where the corrosion of the floor plates can be originated by different causes. Initially, by materials issues uh, related to the metallurgy, overlapping plates, welding procedures, use of coatings under the bottom plates. After we have the internal corrosion issues, due to um, lining damage is the animation is not working a weak product leak to the to the foundation can you just hit <coughs> enter halil yeah the and, internal and corrosion yeah. also yeah um after that we have uh, factors related to the external corrosion which is, uh, will be the focus of this presentation. And finally, the operational issues related to the movement of the floor plates, uh, breathing of the tank, bulging, etc. The last one, operational. All these uh, uh, factors can cause, uh, you know, the floor uh, corrosion above the bottom plate or under the bottom plate. Can we move to the next slide? This one, yeah. This is slide, previous one, please. Can you put the previous one, Helen? Yeah. This slide is a list of common uh, causes of soil side corrosion. We are going to talk about this now. So, uh, one of them inappropriate or poor construction practices that are related to the tank foundation, welding of the plates overlapping of the plate, a formation of oxygen differential cells causing pitting corrosion, presence of moisture and salt under the tank originated by product leaks due to internal corrosion, bimetallic galvanic couples between the carbon steel plates and grounding system, also galvanic coupling between the rebar uh, of concrete foundation, or galvanic effect between new bottom tanks and old bottom tanks. The presence, sorry, the presence of uh, sulfide reducing bacteria and other bacteria uh, has been detected in many cases under the bottom plates. Uh, also, mill scales as part, um, creates anodic and cathodic area. This is part of the manufacturing of the, of, the, of the carbon steel plate. And finally, ineffective cathodic protection and or straight current from the piping system associated to the tanks. Next one, please. Sorry, we'll get there in yeah. the end. In some, in some cases, external corrosion of um, the tanks is caused by rocks or aggregates or any other heterogeneities in the foundation in contact with the steel plates. Um, oxygen differential cells can be formed. Best practices dictate the use of clean and uncontaminated sand. However, during the service life of the tank, it is almost impossible to avoid water ingress and contamination for the reason that we are going to see during this presentation. In tank farms, it's uh, a common practice to repair or to install new bottom plates. Um, if not properly mitigated, the new tanks connected to other ones by the piping system will suffer external corrosion uh, because the new tank in general has more negative potential than the other one and will be anodic with respect to uh, the older tanks. This coupling Phenomena is more critical in coastal areas with low resistivity soils or 
or SOHA environment. Proper cathode protection or other control corrosion control and mitigation methods such as vapor phase, uh, vapor um, corrosion emission should be implemented to reduce the corrosion risks. This uh, slide, we wanted to show the most um, relevant standard related to cathode protection uh, um, by NACE API or EMU that are commonly used for, uh, by tank owners all around the world. The most common form of corrosion mitigation method recommended in these codes and standards um, are appropriate design for the tank foundation and the application of conventional corrosion control techniques such as uh, cathode protection or a combination of cathode protection and coatings. Hence, the existing standard in place. Yeah. In relation to the presence of water under the tank floor, this slide shows the chime area where the rain or condensed water can ingress under the bottom plate. Settlement of tanks can contribute to this problem. Uh, considerable uh, effort has been made in the region to avoid water ingress under the tanks. This uh, sketch in the right um, shows a berm sealant detail to avoid rain or condensed water entering under on the other plates. However, the berm seal needs constant filling up and maintenance. Water can ingress due also to the capillarity effects from the soil under the tank foundation, and in many cases in high water table due to proximity to coastal areas. You know? uh, the tank fill up and discharge process and leaks due to internal corrosion of open plates can also contribute to the soil site corrosion. Due to the different variables such as uh, tan settling, water parts, contamination of the foundation, the anodic and cathodic areas can appear in any zone of the bottom plates. And this is going to be uh, explained also in this webinar by Rinder uh, later. No? Next slide. Another process of corrosion are uh, by metallic or galvanic couples, for example, the previous one. Uh, uh, formed uh, between the tank bottom plates and the reinforced steel bars, yeah, that one, uh, of the ring tight concrete foundation in contact with the tank anchor bolts, which is the upper photo in the left. Galvanic couples can also occur between the copper grounding uh, system of the tanks and carbon steel plate, or couplings, as mentioned earlier, between the old and new bottom plates, which is in the lower diagram in the, in the left, where the old bottom can uh, act as a cathode and cause corrosion of the new bottom plate. In this case, effective cathodic potential or uh, secondary containment uh, membranes are required. However, air gaps and buckling continue to be a real challenge to the integrity of the bottom plates. Next slide. Uh, another cause. Oh, sorry, Antonio. Yeah, premium. Sorry. Yeah. I have this lag between. Yeah, this one yeah. here. Yeah. Okay, we need this to pick is, up the pace a little. Yeah, thank you. This is uh, one of the issues to do. To, uh, work in, in the distance, yeah? Okay, another cause accelerated soil corrosion can be the damage of or degradation of the internal lining, which is in the left photo, causing by the top side corrosion of the bottom plates and further, further product leaks uh, of water brine uh, to the immediate soil under the tank bottom. If not properly mitigated, soil side corrosion will occur and water is accumulated between the bottom plates uh, in the foundation. Next slide. Um, we show the cost of corrosion, an estimation of the cost of corrosion. Next one, please. Yeah. 
Yeah, this one. The cost of corrosion, um, a 20 years period of uh, 14 uh, above ground storage tank due to repairs or due to replacement of the whole um, uh, bottom plate. And this is um, one of the major operating companies in the immediate east. In this period of time, uh, 15 million US dollars were spent in total and a considerable saving could have been made if the proper corrosion control and mitigation methods had been uh, applied. This is to show the importance of the cost of corrosion. The next slide will uh, uh, present a summary of the conditions under which the cathodic protection is not effective. Next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, well, the cathodic protection is or not effective or partially uh, effective. No? So uh, when the bottom plies are not in contact with the electrolyte, so the cathodic protection current cannot flow to the, from the soil to, to the plate. The shielding of uh, bitumen sand or asphalt uh, foundation or um, high density polyethylene membranes as a secondary containment, if the cathodic protection is outside of the tank, far from the tank away. Uh, also high temperatures in the, in the, in the tank that uh, will require more current density to cover with the corrosion mechanism. Uh, the coating that are applied in many cases under the bottom place are um, being damaged or during uh, construction, welding uh, work, or also during the life of the, of, of the tank by erosion. Micro Microbiological induced corrosion, also. Unusual pollutant in the electrolyte, like the salts or contaminated sand, and dry foundation in some cases that uh, is uh, um, avoid to the flow of the cathodic protection current. Next slide. Yeah, for the, the reason mentioned here, such as settlement of the tank foundation, repair patches, Filling, refilling the cycle uh, of the tanks, either separately or in combination, may contribute to the buckling of the tank plates and formation of air gaps. In this case, there is a necessity to design complementary corrosion control measures. For example, injection volatile corrosion emitters into the voice, removing the buckle plates or replacing the oily sand foundation with clean sand to help to mitigate the corrosion risk. The um, last slide from my side is, will be a summary of the key points uh, for corrosion control and mitigation uh, of the tanks. Regarding to cathodic protection, ensure efficient cathodic protection system with uh, current distribution, eliminate barriers shielding the cathodic protection, improve burn seal to avoid the ingress of water, use of corrosion monitoring reference electrodes and coupon and probes and ensure a suitable technology placement, placement and location under the tank bottom. Uh, regarding the internal linings and internal coatings, ensure appropriate selection of the lining and quality control, quality assurance during the installation. Uh, <clears throat> and regarding the external coating, although being damaged by welding works, external coating are still specified by some operators. Uh, this uh, helps twofold, less uh, cathodic protection current required and better current distribution, but the coating is susceptible to um, get deteriorated on time. Um, volatile corrosion inhibitors to address the limitation of cathodic protection and liner. So uh, consider the use of um, inhibitors as uh, the start of, uh, at the start of the design of the new tank and seek for supplier guidance for design and retrofit application. Let me hand back to Chris now. All right, uh, thank you, um, Antonio, and to all the participants. Uh, apologies, we're having these little technical problems with the uh, the lag in slide in um, time for slide control. Um, so let me um, perhaps. Uh, Halil can just move forward and we'll hand over control to Rindat. Um, 
Rindit uh, Algra is going to share uh, his experience with implementing asset integrity management programs for above ground storage tanks. And as we will hear, uh, InVenture have compiled a very large database of tanks that they've conducted assessments on from around the world, including many here in the GCC region. And we're going to hear some very interesting insights from, uh, from the, um, uh, the compilation of work that they've done in recent years. So Rindert, over to you. Yeah, thanks, uh, Chris. Um, first slide I want to show you is, as Chris already said, um, uh, we have done 2,800 tanker assessments for different terminals in different geographies around the world. And some of the findings from going through our databases are summarized in this slide. And I want to share four of those findings with you. Um, first of all, the age of the tank is not always a defining factor in the remaining life of the tank. Even an old tank uh, could have had an upgrade in the past or could have been built on a very solid, very good foundation. And that would lead to low corrosion rates. Uh, we've done tank assessments on tanks from 1956, 1958 still had 20 years of additional lifetime uh, when we did the assessment in 2017 for instance. Second thing I want to share with you is uh, basically represented by the black sheep logo here. Um, five to ten percent of the tank population that we find is in a worse state than expected and that that is obviously causing surprises uh, into leakages or surprises that uh, an operator needs to take a tank out of service uh, earlier than, uh, than he would have planned. Um, third one I want to uh, share with you is that uh, from the databases, from the 400 tanks in this, these specific databases, we found that the average inspection interval is 15.3 years. And that might also be interesting here in the region because what I find with the terminals here in the region is uh, that normally tanks are operated on a 10 year fixed interval. So I believe there's room for improvement. Um, the fourth uh, thing I want to share with you this, is that mostly we find pitting to find in the tank floor to be the leading degradation mechanism for taking a tank out of service for inspection. So I'll go to the next slide. In doing asset integrity management, uh, which is uh, our main core business, um, there are some critical factors for uh, success. Um, first of all, um, the tank should be broken down into the right components. So basically you're asking yourself which components do pose a risk for the operation of the tank. And these components should be addressed in a tank assessment. Uh, second bullet, the assessment system boundary should be clear. Um, you need to think beforehand what you define as the system boundaries in setting up the asset integrity management system. For instance, are you going to include connecting piping to the tank or are you going to consider open vents for the roof as a risk and include them in the system boundary? So um, th these are all important factors to, uh, to consider. Uh, third one, uh, degradation mechanisms as well as the manifestation of that degradation mechanism should be well defined. Um, and then the fourth one is, uh, of course, based on the degradation mechanisms, you need to have suitable inspection plans as to, uh, as to map the degradation with, uh, with enough coverage. Um, then the second last, the risk analysis methodology that needs to be uh, defined to, uh, to control the risk of your, uh, of your terminal and your tanks. And then the, the, uh, then the team roles, responsibilities, and the knowledge of the team. Obviously, asset integrity management is a team effort. It should be uh, well defined in a Rocky matrix. And last of all, the system is kept alive by evergreening new inspection and maintenance results to update the tanks with the new information you have. Going to the next slide. This is basically the, the process that I was describing in my, uh, in my sheet before this sheet. So uh, I will skip that one. Um, 
what I will do is uh, tell you a little bit about the codes and guidelines. In this case, specifically the EMUR 183. Uh, Antonio also already told us a little bit about the different codes and guidelines and recommended practices for storage tanks. This particular one is from EMUA, which is a European organization. And this is widely used in Europe. And it contains this interesting table where you can find the design considerations for tank foundations, the causes for leakage, um, how inspection records and techniques affect the integrity of the tank. Um, also systems for detecting leakage and minimizing soil pollution. Um, there's, uh, there's different factors on condition monitoring and maintenance. And basically this table can be used to set up your asset integrity management program and to define your maintenance and mitigating actions. But I will get to that also later in this presentation. Um, going to the next slide, um, as uh, Antonio was uh, already saying, um, bending uh, at, the, at the annular area and uh, edge settlement can be a, a problem with storage tanks. Um, last year we did a root cause analysis into this for a Middle East operator uh, which tanks were severely affected by soil site corrosion. And what we found is that uh, dew in the morning forms on the geodesic roof of the tank and it uh, basically flows down the shell and collects at the annular circumference. And if you have edge settlement, you can have a gap between the, between the annular and the foundation of the tank. So this creates water ingress under the tank floor causing soil site corrosion. And what happens is uh, this water, this specific terminal was close to the sea, so it was uh, uh, water with a lot of chlorides in it. Uh, what happens is the water during the day and because of the heat evaporates, but it leaves the chlorides behind. So um, you get a lot of chlorides in your sand, creating a very corrosive environment. Uh, next one. Um, this is a structural analysis that we did for, uh, for one tank. Um, as I already mentioned, uh, edge settlement is one of the, and creating a gap for the annular is one of the important factors in soil site corrosion. And in the next slide, I also have a video on that. So there's the next slide. So here in this video, you can basically see how a tank settles under the influence of uh, the weight of the shell on the annular area. And what is important to recognize in this video is on the left hand side, the bottom place, because of this edge settlement, you get some upheaval, some lifting of the bottom plates. That's the, uh, that's the red area here in the slide. And because of that, um, uh, you have uh, ineffective cathodic protection. So this could also lead to accelerated corrosion. That's the takeaway for this slide. Brenda, do you have remote control of the um, of the slides or not? Uh, it's on and off. Okay. So Halil, you might need to help with that, please. Yeah, could you go to the next slide, uh, Halil? Yeah. 
Okay, so um, this is uh, the next slide. Speaking of uh, inspection results, uh, this is a picture of the remaining lifetime per floor plate of a tank for the handler and for the membrane. Uh, for basically for filling because of soil site corrosion and overviews like this will help you in drawing up maintenance plans and mitigation strategies. Basically the red areas are the areas with a lower wall thickness so that's where you focus your, uh, your maintenance uh, activities. Next slide please. This is, a, this, is a, this is a Middle East uh, situation. Um, what you see here in this slide is for 142 tanks, you see the corrosion rate for the tank membrane and the tank annular. Um, first thing that you notice is that uh, there's a wide variety in corrosion rates. And the second thing you should notice is that for some tanks, the corrosion rates are really, really high. Um, these are all corrosion rates in millimeters per year for soil site corrosion. So in this specific uh, database we, uh, and these specific graphs, we focus on soil site corrosion. Next slide, please, uh, Khalil. And because of this, uh, the soil site corrosion and the associated corrosion rates, this is uh, a slide with the same 142 tanks. And here you see the surface life in years uh, since, uh, since newly built for, uh, again, the 142 tanks. And what you can see with the tank membrane is that 15% of the tanks were rejected within 10 years of service because of soil site corrosion. And 35% of the tanks were rejected within 20 years of service. So that's basically the left-hand side of the graphs that you see here. Um, going to the graph, the bottom graph for the tank handler, one of the worrying things that we also saw in the database is that 11% of the tanks were taken out of service before the planned inspections were due because they were leaking. And of course, that creates um, um, yeah, quite, a, quite a stir on a terminal if you have to take a, a tank out of service because of leakage. Um, next slide, please. Again, um, same database uh, with tanks, the same 142 tanks. And what you see here, the top graph, this is basically the cost for corrosion associated with the, with the storage tanks. Um, so these tanks were all um, taken out of service because of maintenance and inspection on, on because of soil site corrosion on the handler and or the membrane. The top graph shows you the total costs for the tank turnaround, and this includes cleaning, inspection, uh, taking, out, taking the tank out of service, some costs associated with operation, and uh, also downtime costs, revenue losses. And specifically the revenue losses, which is depicted in the, in the bottom graph, the revenue losses are the biggest contributing factor to the overall costs for taking a tank out of service. And that's especially true in the, in the business climate of today with the contango in the oil sector and uh, storage tank farms filled to maximum capacity. So uh, again, revenue losses is the biggest contributing factor in the cost of corrosion. Next slide, please. Um, as I said in one of the uh, first slides, the average inspection interval that we find for tanks is about 15 years. And here you can see a simple example of a business case. This is for a large crew terminal with uh, 40 tanks. And uh, basically what you will see is the cost savings um, when the inspection interval changes from 10 to 15 years. So after implementing your asset integrity management system, um, important things to notice here is the availability. As you can see, after the implementation, the availability went up from 97.5% to 98.3%. And that may not seem like much, but if you apply this, um, it basically gives you a virtual extra tank of 31 meters diameter and a height of 14 meters. So uh, the cost savings are uh, quite substantial. Next slide, please. Um, as I was saying uh, earlier on, I would go into uh, maintenance scenarios uh, a little bit more. So uh, I come to you with an example. Um, this is an example of an asset integrity management study on a cone roof storage tank. 
and uh, it has uh, it has uh, impressed current cathodic protection and um, the corrosion rate is quite high leading to a remaining lifetime from inspection in 2020 so it was inspected this year of three and a half years so something needs to be done before taking this tank back into service again next slide please as i was saying something needs to be done to take this tank back into service again and there's different scenarios that you can uh, that you can do to uh, to extend the service life and extend the remaining lifetime um, first of all, the, the, the simplest solution is install patch plates over corroded areas and this will basically get your uh, repair thickness, your remaining thickness up to 6.35 millimeters for the annular area. You will still have the same corrosion rate because you are not mitigating the corrosion rate and it will get you a remaining lifetime of seven years instead of the three and a half years on the first slide from the inspection results. Now, obviously a better solution a uh, better solution from a technical point of view is to jack up the tank, replace the annular in 10 millimeters, replace the soil in the annular area because the salty soil is actually causing the corrosion and install a drip ring to, uh, to combat the, the air gap and the water ingress under the annular. Um, now this will, this will get you a, a remaining lifetime of 29 years, but obviously uh, the costs will rise significantly uh, compared to the first uh, scenario. Um, the third scenario is kind of the same as the second scenario. Um, uh, what we do here is install a 12 millimeter annular so you have some extra corrosion allowance. And again, this will extend your remaining lifetime. And then the fourth one, um, this, is, uh, this includes uh, the second scenario, but uh, adding a coating to the underside of the tank floor plates. And this will get you uh, 43 years remaining lifetime. But uh, but the highest cost. So in, 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 in the conventional maintenance and mitigating scenarios, you have to balance costs against remaining lifetime. Next slide, please. All right. I think uh, at this point we're going to transition. Um, so Rinda, thank you very much for those uh, uh, very enlightening insights, particularly from that tank database of uh, 142 tanks in this region. So clearly there's a significant problem out there. Um, so uh, we're going to hand over to uh, Halil now and we're going to get into the, uh, um, the meat of uh, understanding uh, vapor uh, phase corrosion inhibitors, uh, the technology, how they're applied in different uh, applications and see some uh, very useful case histories. So over to you, Halil. Thank you, Chris. Uh, just for the sake of time, uh, this is a recap slide uh, that I believe rendered and Antonio covered most of the material in it. So for the sake of saving time, I'm going to uh, skip to the next slide. And the uh, message from this slide is tank failures happen. And when they take place, they result in costly HSE and operational consequences. In order to avoid tank failure and improve uh, operational efficiency, usually tank owners and operators look for ways to protect their tanks against soil side corrosion. And uh, one of these methods, beside the conventional methods that are available out there in the industry, is Corologic AST solution using BPCI technology. Uh, to simplify, this solution is composed of three main parts. You have the BPCI material, and you have uh, which, which can be in powder or liquid, depending on the application methodology. You have the corrosion monitoring uh, system which is used to measure the corrosion rate before and after introduction of BPCI material and finally the replenishment or the delivery system which is used to replenish the content of vapor phase corrosion inhibitors in the future when needed. Now, VPCI technology as a technology it has been out there in, this, in the industry for a few decades uh, and it was mainly used in uh, packaging applications, 
such as plastic wraps, papers, and foam pads. Cortic vapor phase corrosion inhibitors are organic salts in nature, which are mixtures of amines and carboxylic acids. Uh, they have partial vapor pressure that enables its protective molecules to evaporate, diffuse through the space, and form a monomolecular protective layer. This ability to evaporate enables VPCI to provide protection in three phases, the continuous electrolyte, the vapor phase, and the interface between the vapor and the continuous electrolyte. So the vapor phase corrosion inhibitor technology itself is not unconventional, but the use of its characteristic to evaporate freely at ambient pressure and temperature to provide protection for above ground storage tank bottom is what is unconventional. Now, this, this is an animation video to, to provide a means to visualize the working mechanism of uh, uh, VPCI when introduced into the tank foundation. We basically, once we inject the chorologic material in the sand, it starts to sublimate or evaporate, diffuse through the sand, and reach to the underside of the tank bottom plates, absorb onto the metal surface, form a mono, monomolecular protective layer that isolates the uh, bottom plate from the corrosive environment. And this, for, for, uh, this layer is formed in the air gaps and the areas where the plate is in contact with the soil. Now, the second part of the Corologic AST solution is the corrosion monitoring system, uh, which is basically using electrical resistance probes and data logging. This is also an animation video that shows how we basically uh, install the probes by pushing slotted pipes under the tank foundation. And we install multiple ER probes at the periphery of the tank. We push the ER probes and then monitor the corrosion rate before the injection of the chorologic material under we, under, until we establish a baseline corrosion rate. And then after injection, we continue monitoring and we see uh, uh, how the corrosion rate starts to drop over time. Sorry, it's repeating itself. The final uh, system component is the chime area seal system. And uh, one of the requirements to maximize on the service life of Corologic VPCI solution and the protection of tank in general is a sound chime area seal system, which prevents the ingress of moisture and, and chlorides or oxygen to the under tank environment. And it's usually composed of a sealant, a packer rod, a sealant and a wrapping band. Now, in this section, I will share with you and the audience uh, the different application methodologies for Corologic AST solution and example regional projects with major operators from oil and gas, power and water sector. It's worthwhile mentioning, Chris, that all the example projects shared here are published in NACE papers. And at the end of the presentation, I will share a, a more comprehensive list of published articles that cover uh, the dates between 1993 and 2018. Now, Very good, thank you. Uh, as I mentioned uh, in our track record slide at the beginning, uh, we have implemented Corologic AST solution to 45 tanks while they are out of service. So, this is an animation to show the application methodology for out of service application, where we install the probes and then we decide into the injection uh, date. We go inside the tank, we drill a hole through the tank floor, and then the number of uh, the holes is an engineering decision to ensure the uniform distribution of the powder. And then we introduce the, uh, the powder into a fogging machine and it gets fogged under the tank uh, through the injection holes. Uh, then the hole is patched, uh, patch welded, and we do this for all the holes in the tank. As you can see, the powder that is trapped between the tank bottom plate and the soil starts to evaporate and sublimate and create that protective uh, layer 
similar to uh, basically the injection of corologic slurry under the tongue. Again, the molecules get absorbed and then uh, uh, start to reduce the corrosion rate further over time. Uh, one of the first out-of-service field applications in the MENA region was for a 104 meter in diameter tank that belongs to a major oil and gas company in the Arabian Peninsula. Uh, this tank was 104 meter in diameter, constructed on an oily sand layer with concrete ring wall and protected with impressed current cathodic protection system. As per the inspection report uh, uh, that we reviewed before the application of Corologic ASD solution, the oily sand layer and the presence of air gaps resulted in shield shielding the cathodic current and rendered the CP system partially effective. Now, what we did, we installed electrical resistance probe around the periphery of the tank, as we can see on the graph, and uh, uh, we monitored the corrosion rate uh, uh, for 60 days before inject injection, and then Corologic VPCI powder was injected through the holes, drilled into the tank, tank floor. This table summarizes the corrosion rates before and after injection and shows the average percentage reduction of more than 90% for this tank. Uh, this, is a, 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 this slide shows a cumulative metal loss graph of one of the probes versus time. The first section, as you can see on the left, uh, uh, is for the metal loss trend before injection, and the, the, right, the section on the right is for the metal loss trend after injection, which shows how the metal loss trend started to flatten after injection of corologic powder, and basically forecasting uh, forward the metal loss trend before injection shows that the metal loss trend would have continued in the absence of corologic VPCI powder. And this difference between uh, the forecasted uh, metal loss and the actual metal loss uh, translates into extension of service life of the tanks, less repair and maintenance and less downtime for the tanks. Now, uh, Corologic AST application for tanks construction, constructed on clean sand with HDPE liner are good candidates for our second application methodology or scenario, which is the in-service application, uh, where basically where basically uh, we push perforated uh, slotted pipes and perforated tubes under the tank and uh, uh, inject corologic slurry liquid in this case through those uh, tubes, which by the way, the animation shows that they have uh, shallow embedment depth. However, in reality, we can push the, those tubes up to the center of the tank. The corologic material, again, in, 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 in this case, it is liquid, diffused through the sand, form a monomolecular protective layer under, uh, on, the, on the surface of the tank bottom plates and, and provide the required protection. Now, uh, let me just... Uh, in 2015, we implemented an in-service solution for a fire water tank that belongs to a leading water desalination company in the GCC countries. Uh, this is basically a tank 15 meter in diameter constructed on a clean sand and concrete ring wall and protected with impressed current cathodic protection system. During the service life of the tank, the CP system failed and the operator wanted to ensure protection of the tank without the need to put the tank out of service and go through costly process of changing the CP system. For this tank, as we can see, three uh, uh, injector pipes or tubes were pushed under the tank as indicated by the solid black lines and three corrosion probes were installed around the periphery of the tank as indicated by the uh, red uh, hole uh, lines. Um, this is a graphical representation of the cumulative metal loss trend versus time for the three probes. And as we can see again, the graph is divided into two sections, pre-injection and post-injection. The y-axis is the cumulative metal loss and the x-axis is the uh, time and days. And we can see how the trend in the metal loss 
have uh, changed and flattened after the injection of the uh, chorologic uh, slurry. And this is a, a table that summarizes the corrosion rate again before and after injection with a percentage reduction of more than 90%. Now, another successful and major uh, project that we uh, had is for online injection for 21 tanks for a major Middle Eastern refinery. Now, uh, uh, and that was in 2016, where Corologic VPCI liquid was injected under 21 tanks. Now, this facility faced premature failure of four tanks, as, as, as mentioned by uh, uh, Antonio at the beginning of this presentation. And they, they've done a cost-benefit analysis between using conventional methods and or going for Corologic AST solution. The cost-benefit analysis resulted uh, in savings of more than $13 million. Uh, this slide is basically for one of these 21 tanks that summarizes the corrosion rate before and after injection for eight probes under the same tank, uh, under a 78 meter in diameter tank. Uh, and as you can see, the pre-injection corrosion rate here on the left side, the second column, uh, is basically so high and it, it, it basically measured by the ER probes and it confirms the, uh, uh, the, the data that was, or the corrosion rate that was reported uh, for the four tanks that were taken out of service, which is basically one to two millimeter uh, per year. And in this, we were reporting corrosion rate on quarterly basis after the injection, and you can see the uh, uh, extreme reduction in the corrosion rate uh, for, for more than two years and the average efficiency we had is more than 90%. Uh, and this is a graphical uh, graph or uh, representation for the same tank showing the corrosion rate versus time. In this case, we are showing corrosion rate, uh, uh, corrosion rate rather than a metal, uh, accumulated metal loss. Uh, we can see how the corrosion rate started to uh, slow down after the injection of the uh, slurry at this time. Uh, the last application scenario uh, is the installation of chorologic dispensing system during tank construction. And this system can be used to provide protection during construction period until the CP system is commissioned and can be used uh, as a provision to provide protection for the tank uh, also during operation. This is a typical engineering drawing uh, for the system. The system is composed of concentric dispensing rings connected to a straight transfer lines that terminate into a manifold box that later can be used to pump the liquid into the dispensing uh, rings and ensure uniform distribution of the uh, VPCI material. This is a video uh, that shows uh, uh, the installa actual installation for the dispensing system for 78 meter in diameter tank. The, the, the process starts with uh, uh, laying uh, spacer and then as you can see the white ones these are spacers and then laying down the dispensing rings uh, and and the transfer lines uh, and then the transfer lines as we can see are passed through the concrete ring wall and this is an overview of how the distribution of the dispensing rings and then the contractor can continue their uh, uh, normal construction activities by you know, compacting the sand on top of the dispensing, uh, dispensing or dispensing system. Now, the introduction of uh, the, basically the uh, the introduction of uh, VPCI uh, material uh, has raised a lot of questions regarding cathodic protection system and whether this system is, is you know, uh, uh, compatible with the cathodic protection system itself in, ter in terms of operating parameters or uh, uh, the system components. Uh, so, uh, again, cathodic protection is a well-established technology in the industry and the main soil side corrosion mitigation method used in this region and in North America, followed by Europe. It's very effective system under the right conditions. So when the tank floor is in direct contact with the tank foundation, VPCI 
uh, uh, or the CP system can completely mitigate uh, uh, soil site corrosion. However, the tank floor to soil interface is, is complex in nature and it has and it uses many uh, details uh, uh, such as, for example, air gaps uh, that is formed due to basically uh, the hydrostatic stresses, uh, filling and refilling cycles, and the weaving of in the concrete in the sorry tank bottom plates. Whenever you have uh, a gap, uh, the CP system uh, current cannot reach and cannot polarize the structure. This doesn't apply to VPCI. The same applies for when you have a settlement. CP system current doesn't reach VPCI can provide protection in those areas. With time, the sand uh, sand uh, the sand pad it gets dry and the resistivity increases uh, tremendously. And in this case, the value of the corrosion current that reaches to the uh, tank bottom surface is uh, is reduced and is not enough to to polarize the structure to the required level. But in this case, even uh, VPCI is independent of the resistivity of the sand. Also bitumen layer, the presence of sheathing material like oily sand, bitumen layer, or asphalt, uh, you know, sometimes it might be conductive, sometimes it's not. So at least it, it renders the CP system partially effective. And again, VPCI solution is independent and, and the working mechanism BPCI doesn't depend on that. So uh, in this case, it's lo logically speaking, in the areas where the tank floor in direct contact with, this, with the uh, conductive electrolyte, CP is sufficient to provide protection. And we can supplement the performance of CP in the areas where it loses contact with conductive electrolyte uh, uh, can be supplemented using VPCR technology. But I think the big question is, are they compatible or not? Uh, in, the, in the last eight years of my career, I personally went in a quest and worked with industry professionals and researchers to find answers to different questions about compatibility and interactions between cathartic protection and chronologic BPCI. Uh, I have done tests in-house and thir in third-party lab to verify compatibility with BPCI with impressed current cathartic protection system components such as MMO anodes, titanium conductors, permanent reference electrodes, which all showed no negative impact on the performance of these components. One of the earliest research work done was in 2015, as we see a summary table here for it, was published in NACE paper in Corrosion 2016 conference with uh, uh, Pankaj Panchal, a corrosion and CP specialist, and Anish Gandhi from Metal Samples. In this research, Six lab scale tanks were constructed to simulate actual tank construction and ICCP system with ER probes were used. Uh, three tanks, the CP system was not activated from day one and the other three tanks were activated uh, uh, from day one. The tanks, as you can see here, this, these are the three tanks unprotected with CP, these tanks are, are protected with CP. Before injection of VPCI in the six tanks, the the unprotected tanks showed an average corrosion rate of 13 MPY, while the CP, uh, the CP protected tanks showed 3 MPY. So that's a clear uh, indication of the uh, effect of CP on the corrosion rate. Just by activating CP, we were able to reduce it down to less than 3 MPY in average. And then after three months, we injected corrosion uh, inhibitor in the six tanks, and we can see that the corrosion inhibitors were able to reduce the corrosion rate by uh, 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 an average of three MPY to the three tanks, and it reduced the corrosion rate even further uh, to less than 0.3 MPY. So the maximum protection was achieved uh, 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 using a combination of VPCI and CP protection method. In 2017, uh, Kelvin Penn, who's a CP specialist and instructor and I worked together and published a paper that looked into, looked into the impact and the interactions between VPCI and press current cathodic protection system from the angle of effect of polarization, VPCI on polarization and cathodic protection currents. Uh, we devised a setup, I think for the sake of time, I'm going just to go very quickly through these slides. This is the setup and, and basically, uh, uh, we looked into three, uh, we were monitoring three uh, parameters the potential, the corrosion current, and the cathodic uh, protection current. 
and the uh, and the, the the outcome or the conclusion of that result is that uh, study was that chemistry that was tested in 2017 showed a, a, a synergistic effect with the CP. It worked as a cathodic polarizer and resulted in reduction in the required current, uh, cathodic protection current required to knock out the uh, uh, corrosion uh, current. Now, in a sequel study in 2018, uh, we used the same setup, but we tested another two different chemistries and the conclusion was not all VPCI chemistries are synergistic with the uh, uh, with the CP uh, system and can even work as a cathodic depolarizer in some cases and uh, increase the need for uh, uh, increasing the corrosion uh, cathodic protection current. In summary, um, not all VPCI products work in synergistic with the cathodic protection. Uh, chorologic VPCI products work as a cathod cathodic polarizer and no negative impact on the MMO and those titanium conductors and no negative impact on reference electrodes, and they provide maximum protection when combined with CP. Uh, okay. First, you would like okay. to Yeah, uh, I would, Halil, and um, thank you very much for, uh, for that insight and all those great videos. Um, I, we cut them down uh, in length a bit uh, because of time, so, I hope the impact wasn't lost on the audience, but you know they showed that um, there is a, a real track record, um, not only here in the Middle East and elsewhere, of using VPCI on everything from new construction to in-service tanks to out-of-service tanks. Um, and I think uh, all credit to, uh, uh, to Cortec for developing the uh, the technology and the application methods um, if one believes in uh, divine timing um, and I'm now converted uh, in the May online issue of materials performance uh, the NACE magazine uh, the headline cover is um, or article is vapor corrosion inhibitors for tank bottom corrosion control um, I can assure you we didn't know this was coming out, um, but it's a summary of an independent study conducted by the Pipeline Research Council International uh, in 2018 in the USA. And um, <clears throat> they, uh, I, I'll just read you the uh, four of the concluding statements that are in the article. Uh, VCIs were found to be effective in mitigating pitting of A36 steel exposed to corrosive sand when recommended dosages were used. The use of VCIs could provide protection and thus service life extension for the tanks without CP or where CP systems have either failed or degenerated. That ER probes designed to measure the surface average corrosion rate can be used to monitor both the plate corrosion rate and the efficiency of VCIs. And that uh, it, overall, the work demonstrated the proof of concept of the VCI technology. Um, and they, like all good research organizations, recommended that some additional work would help optimize the operating and monitoring parameters associated with the technology. So, you know, that's. Um, a really nice endorsement independent of uh, any of the companies in the marketplace. Uh, further, we've provided for your information uh, a published list of articles, um, several of which um, uh, Cortec have contributed to. These cover the period 93 to 2018. And so with that slide we come to the end of the formal presentation and we now have uh, we can now go to q a and i've been keeping an eye we have uh, 14 questions that have been posted so far um, and i'm going to pose the questions to the panelists or to the contributors not in any particular order based on uh, my selection of them. Um, 
if we're not able to get through all the Q&A uh, or all of the questions before the, uh, the wrap-up session, then um, uh, we will, uh, and we will anyway, we'll issue a, uh, a, a written Q&A document that we'll email out to uh, all the attendees. And I would just encourage you to stay online, both to listen to this Q&A now, and hopefully we'll have a second go at the polling, um, which is always good fun and might be enlightening for all of us. So um, let me start with a question. Uh, I'll leave the panelists to decide uh, who might want to answer it, but um, perhaps this one for Halil. Uh, when the tank foundation is crushed stone and compacted sand, how effective will the, uh, Will the v VPCI be? Uh, well, Chris, it depends on the concern and, and the perspective of the, uh, the, the the one who asked this question. I mean, in terms, if his concern is whether the crushed stone and the compacted sand will impact the diffusion rate or the v of the VPCI material under the tank, then no. We have implemented uh, a Corologic AST solution on uh, 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 compacted uh, sand with crushed stone, uh, online and offline. So as a, quick, as a quick answer to the question, I don't see an impact unless there are details that that we need to be aware of in order to answer the question uh, more thoroughly. Okay. Um, there are two questions uh, similar, basically asking what is the, uh, the life or the, or the predicted uh, maximum life of uh, VPCI applications? Okay, like any engineering uh, system, VPCI or Corologic AST uh, system is designed for a service life, which is 10 years. And we usually design it in a way to last either, either 10, 10 years or between two consecutive T&Is, whichever is shorter. But since in this region, most of the time, uh, uh, the time between T&Is usually is in the range of 10 years. The design life for Corologic AST solution is 10 years. And during the service, okay. during the service life, Chris, if you allow me, sorry to interrupt you, we, we, we continue monitoring the corrosion rate under the tank using the corrosion probes. Uh, and uh, we, uh, uh, we make replenishments if necessary and, and, and as indicated by the corrosion monitoring system. And speaking of corrosion monitoring, one of the questions was, how far under the tank do you install the ER probes? Okay, now uh, again, it depends on the tank foundation. Uh, for example, uh, installing uh, 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 probes or injector tubes, we can, we can push it all the way to the center. Uh, however, for probes, because the uh, uh, depends on the size of the tank, but usually our standard uh, uh, application or installation procedure is one to to one point five meter from the uh, tank ring wall. But if the tank is under construction, new tank, we we have installed ER probes at the center, ten meters away from the ring wall, and different configurations. So. It depends on the accessibility, but the standard installation procedure is through the ring wall, one to 1.5 meter away from the uh, ring wall. Okay. There's another question here. Um, when injecting VPCI through the slotted pipes, how do you avoid piercing a liner if it's there when you push the pipe towards the center of the tank? Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, if there is a, an HDPE liner on the way, it's, it's definitely we, uh, in this case, we uh, create or compromise the HDPE liner at the area where we introduce the uh, injector, but this opening is, is, uh, is less than 14 mm in, 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 in diameter, 14 to 15 mm, and we have implemented this solution for more than 120 tanks with HDPE liners without 
without any complaint from the clients. Yeah, but definitely, we uh, we breach the HDPE liner at the areas where we inject the line, uh, install the liner. Sorry. So here's a, a kind of sixty-four thousand dollar question. Um, not a million. Three piece. <laughs> no, 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 not a million. Sixty-four thousand today. Um, if VPCI works perfectly, can we avoid a CP system? Uh, direct answer is no. And we never recommend uh, uh, VPCI to replace uh, CP. From our experience, uh, VPCI has been implemented on tanks protected with CP and unprotected with CP system. I always believe in multiple lines of defense. So, uh, uh, having a, a CP system in place and, and supplementing its performance in the areas where it loses contact uh, with VPCI is definitely the, the best approach and you get the best and maximum protection. However, in, there are some cases where the, uh, for example, the uh, retrofitting of the CP system is infeasible, uneconomic, un 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 so the use of VPCI can provide a good solution for for the tank owner or, or operator yeah many questions here about uh, the duration and the performance of the vpci powder and liquid and i think you've indicated that it ought to be possible to get up to 10 years protection um, can we use it on existing tank farms well i think you've demonstrated that there's a track record in applying it retroactively to existing uh, tanks, whether they're online or offline. Um, there's well, was another question. Yes. Will VPCI mitigate against microbiologically influenced corrosion? Uh, and if yes, do you have any case studies? Um, that's a very good question. Again, the uh there are areas that need to be explored uh, and researched when it comes to MIC and, and VPCI. But the, the same study that you mentioned, uh, Chris, uh, that was recently published in Material Performance magazine, which is a study done by the PRCI in 2000 and probably 18. Uh, they, yeah. The sand that was used in the experiment had bacteria has had bacteria in it, and uh, the the report indicated that even in the presence of the bacteria, the vapor phase corrosion inhibitors that were injected uh, uh, managed to reduce the corrosion rate in the presence of bacteria. So uh, the 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 simulating tank environment and simulating MIC in the lab is not very straightforward, but that's that's one, uh, one uh, report that we can share with whoever asked the question that shows the uh, bacteria count in the, in the sand and how VPCI was able to provide protection in the presence of bacteria. Yes, as I understand it, they took sand from a uh, failed tank situation and used it in the uh, laboratory studies. Yes. And uh, as you say, um, it contained bacteria and and yours, you provided uh, one of the products that, uh, that worked well in this independent study, I understand. Yeah. Um, during the, uh, here's another question. Um, do we need to maintain specific conditions during injecting the VPCI, uh, in particular temperature? Is, is it temperature sensitive during the application? Uh, during the, uh, we have okay, okay during the application or you mean the uh, I, th I I think I think it says during while injecting the VPCI. So if you think about our very hot summer temperatures here, is that an impediment to? Uh, Most of our uh, projects were executed in summer, Chris. So. Uh, I think if the concern is about the performance of Corologic uh, material, VPCI material, uh, with respect to the operating temperature of the tank, then yes, VPCI uh, material has a limitation, the regular 
material that we are using here uh, 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 has a limitation up to 80 degrees, okay? Uh, and I prefer to, to apply them anywhere not more than 65 or 70 degrees. And we have another version of the chemistry where it can be used for uh, 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 hot uh, tanks and uh, also, we have applied our solution for on, under cryogenic tanks, which is uh, sub-zero. And even some of our applications during the injection of slurry were in winter in Europe and in the States with, with freezing uh, temperatures. And we do treat the chemistry with, for example, antifreeze, et cetera, when we are injecting in, in areas that are very cold. All right. Uh, there's a quick question came through. Did you mean 80 degrees C or 80 degrees F? No, C for sure. Okay, very good. Thank you. Um, there's a question um, related to um, uh, some of the case studies you, uh, you demonstrated. It says, after the corrosion rate was reduced and measured with corrosion probes, was the actual thickness of the tank bottom measured after inspection to confirm the corrosion rates? That's a very good point. And uh, I can answer this question with uh, two points. One, uh, usually because the, uh, uh, the, uh, the tank design life, or the, sorry, the uh, solution service life is 10 years. Okay, we have to wait for 10 years to measure uh, the, uh, to scan the actual floor and get uh, an idea about the actual metal loss before and after injection. Uh, but one of, uh, one of the terminal operators here in Fujera was able to take the tank after five years from injection uh, or four years from injection and uh, conducted an MFL uh, floor scan and confirmed that the average corrosion rate on the tank bottom plate is is less than much less than the average corrosion rate that they witnessed uh, during the previous MFL floor scan. And the second point is, unfortunately, with COVID nineteen, NACE corrosion conference was postponed uh, to June, uh, and I'm not sure if it will happen. But uh, uh, one uh, author was supposed to present a paper that shows uh, uh, MFL data before and after injection of uh, chorologic material for 12 tanks over 11 years, after 11 years from injection. So that would, the, uh, the initial results uh, were very encouraging uh, from this study and it showed that there is a, an obvious advantage and reduction in the corrosion rate and the metal loss reduction uh, before and after introduction of VPCI, not measured by ER probes, but actual floor scans. Okay. Um, another question here about uh, the track record for application of the system to new tanks in the Middle East region. Sorry, Chris, I just... Uh, what, your... what, is, what is the track record for the application of VPCI for new tanks? in the Middle East region? As so far in the Middle East, uh, in our region, is uh, we have installed the dispensing system under 30 tanks, varying in size between 15 to 80 meters in diameter tank. Yeah, and we have successfully uh, specified those systems in feed packages with major engineering companies and clients to provide protection for the tank during construction and pre-commissioning. Um, and maybe we'll have one more here before we have a go at the polling again. Um, this, this one's a, a little more general, but I'll, I'll try and guide you. It says, what are the limitations and challenges in applying v, VCI? So perhaps you might say something about, are there some uh, tank conditions where you would not, uh, where you would uh, decline to, or you don't have a, a good method for application currently? 
and say something a little bit about the uh, the engineering that goes into um, the applications that you do. Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, Corologic ASD solution is an engineered solution. So uh, we look into the tank foundation and the status of the tank itself to decide on the best uh, application methodology. Now, when it comes to factors affecting the VPCI performance, we talk about four, uh, once, uh, the four most important aspect is the containment. So if we have an HDPE liner and, and a chime area seal system, sound chime area seal system, uh, where we can contain VPCI under the tank, that's definitely their absence has an impact on the service life of the solution. Also, uh, tanks, for example, constructed on uh, oily sand or uh, con uh, continuous concrete slab or asphalt, etc. For example, uh, um, the online injection cannot be uh, cannot be done because simply the diffusion rate of the vapor phase corrosion inhibitor from under the asphalt layer or the oily sand layer to the tank to the underside of, of the tank bottom plates is the diffusion rate will be extremely uh, uh, slow so we don't advise or inject corrosion slurry for tanks constructed on such tank foundations um, these are the uh, these are the main uh, uh, limitations that I can think of, uh, Chris, at the moment. Okay. Well, I got a rush of other questions here, but um, can I suggest that we try and relaunch the polling and see if we can get that to work? And then if there's still appetite from the participants, we can uh, come back and uh, have a few more questions recognizing that we're now about 15 minutes over our original time. Okay, um, um, relaunching the polling. Can you see it now? Yes, so um, to all the participants, um, as I understand this now, and we apologize for, uh, uh, for not uh, having thoroughly evaluated this methodology beforehand. Um, this is a learning curve for us as well. We need to go through all of these eight questions uh, and then uh, you submit your answers or answer all eight and then hopefully you'll be able to submit and we will then be able to show you the results of the questions. So if you just start at the top, um, and answer each question. They're very simple and easy to answer. Uh, and then when you've got down to uh, question eight, the last one about, um, would you like to receive invitations to a, a NACE technical exchange group on corrosion control of above ground storage tanks and then hit submit. Um, so, I'll give you uh, a couple of minutes and Halil should be able to see um, the submissions as they come in, hopefully. Yeah, they are coming in, Chris. Okay, okay. Uh, I think we have nine people voting, 10 out of 46. So far, so yeah, we have forty-seven. Uh, some of the questions may not apply to all of you, but uh, just go ahead and answer the questions that uh, that apply to you. So we have now so far nineteen, uh, and it's yeah, it's not possible to choose multiple answers. You can only choose one answer. So in that case, just choose the most significant answer, please. So we have 26 out of 45, 27 now, 28. So 62% of the participants have submitted their 
Yes, there's uh, your, mental, your mental arithmetic is very good, unless you're using your calculator. Well, I'm just reading it, Chris. It's right there. The okay. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you had lots of experience playing pub darts. <laughs> Not really. Um, Not really. What, what, one quid, while people are still doing that, uh, one question, um, will the presentation slide be shared with participants? Um, it's a very big slide pack with embedded videos. I think uh, the answer is that uh, it can be shared via a Dropbox link upon request. Is that um, how you wish to handle that, Halil? Sure, we can do that. They can send us uh, an email request and uh, I can make uh, the presentation available. So we, we, will also, we, we will also find a way to um, uh, post uh, some sort of summary recording of the, of the webinar on your LinkedIn website. I think we have that technology. Mm -hmm. a, recap how we, a recap video. Um, how are we doing on answers uh, now? Eighty-one percent voted so far. So we've uh, thirty-five out of the forty-three finished the polling. We only ha left with eight people. Uh, so seven. I think we can give it another. 30 seconds and close the end the polling yeah okay so i would like to uh, acknowledge the uh, stamina of all the participants thank you very much for um, staying online with us we hope that's an indication that uh, you're getting um, uh value out of the uh the webinar i'm going to uh, end I'm, now chris okay yes and i think you can see the results now okay so um yeah, about 40% are of the attendees are people who are actually involved in operating and owning um, uh, tanks. Um, okay, 25% have had uh, internal tank bottom failures and only 14% external. Good to see that a third of the respondents say they have dedicated in-house uh, engineers uh, responsible for this. Ah, uh, yes, a less good response on um, how you um, how you manage the the data and information from your um, asset integrity program for the tanks. That's a common failing in many companies. I say that from experience, having worked for 40 years for oil and gas companies. Um, okay, interest in uh, seeing more webinars on the subject. Thank you for your, despite our technical problems, thank you for your voter confidence. And great, um, um, I'm the current chair of the NACE TEG 132 meeting. Um, or work group. We will be planning a next uh, work group meeting online. We've normally had them face to face in Abu Dhabi, um, but in the current climate, we'll be trying an online meeting. So, fantastic um, uh, contribution from the attendees. Thank you very much. Um, I've just been asked, Halil, maybe if you go to the Q&A, you'd like to answer to all and provide your email address for those who uh, want to get the presentation. Sure. 
and I'll have a. Should I type but, an? Answer? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Just do do that in the chat, will you? Go to chat and answer all, and provide your email address. Well, I'm in the. And I'll have a quick scan of uh, the questions to see if there's just one or two more we might want to try and answer. Um, okay. Uh, we go to all kind of attendees. Uh, all right. There's there's two good questions here. I think. Or even, even three quick ones. Okay, I see you've posted your email address. So k abed at cortec me dot com for request to Halil for the presentation. Um, so I think his request is that you send him an email. Yeah. Yeah. So the last. Uh, Two or three questions here. Um, are there many forms of VPCI available? How do I select the correct product for my application? Uh, there are multiple chemistries available for a VPCI material. And uh, as I said, not all, I think the main deciding factor is <clears throat> you need to look into the uh, their industrial track record in this application and uh, actual field data that shows the uh, the effect on the re reducing the soil site corrosion and most importantly is uh, also the compatibility with CP so basically conduct tests to see if uh, the BPCI is has a synergistic effect on the cathodic protection system or not I'm happy to and I think uh, also, Calvin, if he's uh, if he's out there uh, in the audience, uh, I think we um, we're happy to receive specific questions on that regard, and we can help in setting up the experiment and uh, testing the the chemistries uh, for compatibility with CP. Yeah, uh, I did see that Calvin Calvin Pin, by the way, uh, has worked with Cortec. Uh, as an independent consultant on some of their research on the synergies with CP. Calvin, I think, has been listening in and um, can also uh, help respond to more detailed questions. Uh, will VPCI be absorbed less on rusted surface as compared to a new surface? Okay. Uh, now, we have tested VPCI chemistry on pre-rusted steel and we measured the ability of VPCI to reduce the corrosion rate uh, 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 before and after injection on a pre-rusted steel and the result we got was about 96% for the rusted steel. Uh, another, that was in a lab. From a field application point of view, we all need to remember that the we installed the ER probes under the tank at least 60 days before the application. And we allow the probe itself to corrode and form this you know, oxide layer. And then we inject vapor phase corrosion inhibitor. And in more than, you know, in all the 700 probes that we have in the field collecting data since 2011, all of them show, or majority of them show a, a reduction, substantial reduction in the corrosion rate uh, post-injection. So an answer to your question is our testing and field application shows that VPCI can and provide protection uh, for rusted steel surfaces as well as. Yeah, yeah. I, I think one of the things for everyone to bear in mind when we talk about uh, electrical resistance probes uh, as a form of corrosion monitoring, you know, at the end of the day, it, it's an indirect uh, measurement method. Um, it is, in fact, designed to measure general corrosion rates, not pitting, which is often the mechanism seen. And so, um, the uh, as Cortec, I know, acknowledge. Um, 
it's really what's really most important with corrosion monitoring for me our probes is to look for the the trends of change rather than um try and do engineering calculations based on the absolute numbers yeah exactly um and one last question uh, i'm going to uh, ask and then we'll close off the webinar and we will uh, as i said earlier we will send out to all the attendees uh, a written q a answer sheet um have uh, it's the question is what's the best solution to monitor corrosion uh, it says in the tanks i think it probably means under the tanks uh, and asking whether uh, technologies like FSM or other more sophisticated um, electrochemical monitoring techniques have been tried. Uh, Chris, your voice was breaking. I don't know if you can hear me now. Yes, I can. Yeah, but I, I did not hear the question well. Okay. Um, do you have any experience with the, the more sophisticated electrochemical corrosion monitoring techniques? sophisticated in what sense like like, uh, F, like fsm okay. or linear polarization techniques or mm -hmm. electrochemical noise or yeah these are electrochemical techniques that are used in the lab to evaluate performance of... all right all right but in in the field do you have any experience with those techniques no no no, no. okay so the, the tried and tested ER probe, yeah? Yes. Okay, very good. Okay, well, um, amazingly, we still have 36 people on board. Um, so a big thank you to uh, all of you and the, um, the 50 plus in total that we had at the peak. I hope you enjoyed the webinar and uh, thanks for the feedback on the polling questions and we I'm sure we will be doing more on this subject because there seems to be a lot of interest in it so with that uh, please keep safe uh, and we all hope for a return to normality in the months ahead thank you thank you and thank you to the panelists uh, obviously Halil uh, Antonio and uh, uh, Rindert. Thank you, gents. Thank you. Thanks.